What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 18 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Blood Dragons Immortal Empires campaign. And do apologize about the delay on this episode, unfortunately I had to work a lot of overtime the other day and was too tired after work uh, to record, just had to collapse into bed as we all do uh, on occasion. Hey, at least I didn't disappear for uh, weeks at a time, which you know does happen periodically, but it didn't happen this time, so we're good. Anyway, we're back in action tell a friend and this time we're going to probably try to do that trident of math land of that i've been talking about doing for the past two or so episodes as we saw last time we encountered some fancy rats in the form of the rat borgs and the rat golems robo rats aplenty were brought down by Aberash's force and he's still sticking around in the hopes of finding grimgor and possibly astrogoth depending on where he is going i don't recall whether we had anything to do this turn, but it looks like everybody's already moved, so I'm going to assume that we did not and just end the turn and head on into the next one. We do have the Witch Hunter threat up and running, meaning we'll get spawns next turn, which uh, I'm pretty happy about. Go, go, go. All right, away we go. While the turn is ending, I did not check because I was too excited to get back into the game here, but I assume we reach the engagement threshold and thus we'll do an hour long for this episode and the offer will continue to stand 300 likes and 40 comments and the next episode will be an hour long as well. And here come the spawns. There's one right beside Aberash. Good, would have preferred two so that he would get his, uh, uh, his additional... Disciples obliterate the threat. Yes, definitely want all that martial valor. And ooh, word save for Ordo Infantry. That should help with the auto resolve, if nothing else. For the next tech, we're gonna go for Relish in Blood because we want that battle healing cap. And I mean, since we've already got three points in here, we might as well take advantage of this and may even go onward to get Alien Weapons of the Deep. And just because we're already at this point in the uh, tree, and might as well power up our Ordo Profundum units. Oh, this also applies to the fourth sister. That's interesting. Hm, didn't expect that, but uh, pleasantly surprised. Now, where do we have spawns? I see one here, none here. Uh, do we have... Oh, we have one outside of Castle Drakenhof. That's good. That's good for you. You might actually have to physically fight this because your army is... Mm, leave something to be desired. Uh, what else do we have? We don't have one outside of Zacharias' army. We have... Ah, damn, we have one outside the Awakening. Which ain't great. Ooh, I see Lord Skrulk is nearby, and in March stance, we could probably force him into a fight with the Abyssal Revenant, so looking like at least we'll have some good fights. This is a bit of an issue, though. Hmm. Is this where they all are? One, two... Uh, three... Is it four that spawn every time? Oh, there's one all the way back here. And Mount Gunbed. Now, Mount Gunbed could probably defend itself. In fact... If this guy besieges us, we may want to actually send Anarch this way. It'll take a few turns to get there, but it might be worth our time for the simple reason that we would be able to get a free... It uh, shall be so. I like the way this guy talks. Uh, we'll be able to get a free unit of the uh, Revenant Knights if we can get this guy, which would be great. All right, Anarch, you're going to take a little bit of a detour. And we'll have to... Oh, man, we don't... Have, well, I guess we'll have to leave one of the heroes from your army. But that's fine. All right, go here, and we'll hope that these guys besiege and don't attack immediately. Although, if they do, I imagine they would lose. Anyway, let's get everybody moving. Uh, Wallach, did you get any spawns near you? Aw, you didn't. <laughs> you waited near near here for uh, nothing. But anyway, I guess we're sending him to Lamia. We can leave Nong Chang for now. I'll probably spawn somebody else here to uh, deal with stuff in Cafe to maybe fight the lizards or fight the dark elves or whatnot, but the Cathians like us well enough knights right now, so I want to see if we can't get a few of their units. Go here. Oh, Don't trespass. I assume this is all our territory. And we're just going to send him to Lami. It's taking Aberash too long because he's too busy defeating everybody. I mean, he's been doing it for 4,000 years. We can't really expect him to just stop, though. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, Northern Provinces should probably get that uh, military access with you. Hmm. These guys don't really want it as much right now, but our relationship with both of them is rising quite splendidly since we're at war with all of their enemies, so that works. Zack. 
Wow. I was hoping one would spawn near you so that you could get your fourth phantom and your 19 out of 20 would get maxed out. But alas, if that's not possible, it's not possible. It looks like you can't reach any of the Skaven territories. And I do want to send you southward to Skaven Blight. Or possibly some of the other nearby territories. Magritta could be a high level. The... something else could be a high level. Something. But Massive Orcal also has potential. Oh, it looks like Massive Orcal has actually been destroyed by the Skaven. Oh, that's quite interesting. Anyway, we'll have to stay relatively near to Castle Carcassonne with you, so and be careful, sir. We'll go to Quinell for now. And let's hope this doesn't immediately get hit by a pile of rats. Like that. Hmm. They got rattling guns, but otherwise the army itself isn't all that strong. This place is down to 35 growth. In fact, wait. Move a little bit... Ah, I was hoping to move out of our own territory, but that's not possible. Yeah, this place is gonna take a while to grow. Damn. Book of the Black Grail, eh? Hmm. Too bad we don't have a growth thing. But oh well, uh, the other uh, the other libraries got there, and I'm sure this one will as well. Abrash, I'm sure you can auto resolve that. I also don't see working armies nearby. Yes, Curious. Lord. All right, we'll move Heinrich der Herzlos uh, down. Uh, I believe we don't get ambushed by an orc stack. No, I don't see one. All right, then. I mean, I guess you can leech the XP from this little army. We'll auto resolve this because there's no way that Abrash needs to. Uh, he needs to be fighting these weakies. Uh, you go here. Abarash, get yourself another disciple, good sir. Oh, in regular stance. Oh, we should also keep an eye on where Astrogoth is. Uh, ought to resolve this. I do have two Inquisition kills, but yeah, we already know that they stand no chance against Abarash's army. Let's face it, why does the auto resolve hate this one Thrall unit in particular? Oh, okay. game. Uh, I guess we'll heal up. All right. And there we go. And who? Karan of the Gore Hunt. Hey, another Talisman of Preservation, always nice. And another Tormentor Sword, always nice to find and get as well. Uh, looks like this guy's still hanging around here. You stay near there. I want that defeat trade, and we're reasonably close, so I think that's where we're gonna head. I did want Tabarash to help these guys recruit some Bloodkin Thralls, but at two turns, I don't think we can stop him moving. At the same time... Hopefully nobody's near enough to Heinrich to kill him off. Hmm. Now, Brush, you can't reach this army, can you? What you could do is go into your encampment slash outpost and wander on this way. Oh, you had to go around? Wow. That was a bit of a waste of movement. And try to get to Astrogoth. We will, however, I think, stay nearby with the rest of these guys so that they potentially defend Jarnagrund. In case it gets attacked by piles upon piles of orcs. We have to remember that the Yorkie faction is uh, one of the strongest in the uh, in the campaign right now. Uh, we also want... Ah, I was hoping for a better virtue. Delete you. Right. You know what, I probably should have taken a couple of uh, heroes from Abrash's armor. We'll send one of these guys to follow. Because we want to put one of each hero in his army. I like the idea of him training a, uh, a follower from everybody's army. Or from, from all the Ordos, rather. Especially as he leads the faction now. Edmund, I guess you're wandering southward in a march stance in the hopes of reaching Nuln. You are going to have to head into Nuln so that you don't get insta-killed. And hopefully this guy just besieges Nuln and allows Edmund to close the distance. Alright, uh, who's up next? Let's von deal. Hey, you're still stuck in here. Reinhardt can reach this, and I guess we're going to send him into the fight. All right, let's level up and then let's get to it. Uh, Melkoths, we do want Immortal Horror. Does it take priority over anything else here? I mean, we could still spam Melkoths if we really wanted to, but I think, um, I think we're going to go for Immortal Horror. All right, let's level up the monstrous as well. These guys got us a great fight last episode, so I'm excited and hopeful that they do the same this time around. Or of Dark Majesty, melee attack minus six and leadership minus eight. Can't... Huh. You have Cloud of Horror. I assume this actually doesn't work for Albrecht Nictus, because this would only apply to the army if this was a lord. It's probably a holdover from being a... Uh, from being an Ordo Templarum... Templaris Lord. And what about you? One level. One point to spend, and there's really nothing all that interesting left, at least in your spell tree. I don't care for Gaze of Nagash, so we're going to go for a heart-to-hat. 
Hard to hit. <laughs> I said hard to hat because I said gaze of Nagash and, I, and my brain just went hat, hat, he has nice hat. And <laughs> so I said hard to hat. And it is hard to hat that hard. Uh, anyway, and go for this. Let's fight this. Let's see how this army can fare off against uh, a, uh, one of these stacks. And oh, they don't actually have the Inquisition kill squads, but they should probably still be more threatening than some of the others we faced off against. So we'll fight. Go. Alrighty, here we go again, assuming that we win this, and I'm willing to bet we shall. We'll get another unit of Forsaken Circle in this particular army. As for the enemy army, I don't see it to be too threatening. We have seen a single unit of Bloodkin Thralls lose uh, against great swords before, most likely due to their armor piercing and the lack thereof. On the Bloodkin Thralls, however, these are our super buffed Bloodkin Thralls, and with 24% ward save and 71 melee defense, they really shouldn't struggle against anything here. The main issues will be, rather, the handgunners, who are going to move in on target pretty much immediately, and the questing knights because of their uh, because of their damage. Anyway, away we go. We're just going to head at, at the enemy in a big old line. Going to take a few shots from those handgunners, but as long as they're firing, they're standing in a relative line, which means we get to hit them with the penumbral pendulum and cause at least one of them to immediately rout. Um, Mr. Reinhardt is going to go directly for the enemy lord here, that enemy witch hunter general, who we will hopefully distract, while our other other flyers that go for those handgunners to make sure they don't hit our blood controls on their approach. And their approach is nearly complete, and hey, they'll feel right at home fighting alongside all these tombstones on this battlefield as they smash into the back lines of the enemies and the halberdiers and the battle pilgrims by virtue of being distracted by our zombies and our forsaken circle are going to suffer a lot to these thralls. We should be able to rip them apart. And the Halberdiers, at least, uh, should be relatively low armored, together with the Battle Pilgrims, unlike those great swords. So, we'll rip through them quite quickly. Same thing is happening over on this side. A massive pile of Halberdiers, but surrounded uh, from nearly every side. And by the Thralls, who are working their way through them quite quickly. And where they start taking damage, we simply heal them up. All right, and it doesn't look like the uh, these infantry are going to hold nearly as long as the uh, as the undead that this particular army fought previously, but that's as expected. We're starting this episode off relatively easy with this battle, but at the same time, we couldn't afford to auto resolve this as the uh, uh, the presence of all those undead stacks nearby uh, would mean that uh, we might get instantly attacked. All right, and I'm sure the uh, uh, Albrecht Nictus is awaiting his second Forsaken Circle. Who are having a pretty darn easy time of it here, unlike the Bloodkin Thralls who can actually lose units to the armor-piercing halberds and whatnot. The uh, Forsaken Circle aren't threatened by really anything here, and there we go. With that, the entire enemy army will shatter relatively quickly, I might add, at about two minutes. The enemy lord will be run down, and hopefully and the entire army will be destroyed. Huh. One loss, I could have sworn I revived ever- Oh, no, it looks like I didn't. I missed one Bloodkin Thrall. Well, darn. Uh, well, maybe we can recover them uh, with Enthrall Captives. Let's just find out. Will that get us our one? Yes, it will. Beautiful. Uh, missing it, I guess, didn't uh, count for much. Now, there are two armies here. I do have to wonder whether they'll fight because they're just full of zombies. I see Vlad's nearby with a full stack and a full stack here. But their full stacks are, let's face it, kind of garbage. Uh, what we will want to do, though... Oh, wait. We want one of these guys, but as soon as we get you on the field... Okay, the mountains are not allowing me to zoom in. Uh, as soon as we do that, the problem will be that we won't be able to... Let me just think about this. 
We won't be able to move as far, meaning we're better off fighting these two. Let's see what the um, what the game says the losses will be for doing this, or will they run? Ah, they'll just run. And if they run, there's no way we're catching them. At least I remain doubtful. Yeah, this guy's gonna run too? Alright, fine. You can just stay near Castle Drake and hop then. And I'm going to assume that you can draw out the garrison. Then we'll grab the Forsaken Circle. There we go. Now we got two of these powering this army up further. And if these guys desire to attack us here, well, that'll be great. All right. Who is up next? Not Let's Von Deal. Zacharias, you... Uh, okay, so the problem with this... Huh. Can you two not get around this little army? Oh, damn. That's not great. I was hoping to pop you into the Awakening to defend it, because this guy will siege it. And what we may want to do then is move away. I wish I knew how far this army could travel, though. Hopefully not far. Well, who are we willing to risk? This guy's level 11, so I'm more willing to risk him. Uh, let's see, move you here. And then move you here as well. Once the distance you can travel, okay, not that far. If this guy's still gonna stick around, we'll get the Abyssal Revenant after him, though right now it may not be, uh, it may not be possible. Speaking of the Abyssal Revenant, are we now able to build this? No, why? Obsolete shipwreck. Maybe it's tied to the Trident of Mathlan? Hmm. Alright, well then we'll do the Trident of Mathlan. Uh, or do we attack Lord Skrulk? He'll probably draw out the big garrison at Oishal, plus there's probably another full stack there. Sounds like fun to me. I think we gotta. I think we just gotta. Uh, he is not far enough away that we can't get a few more units in here. Uh, we already have two of the Dipgar Promethean Reavers. We can't upgrade any of you guys. Could upgrade a few more of the Bloodkin Thralls, but, uh, well, the highest level ones we want to save so that we can upgrade them into Depth Guard Revenant Haunters. It's one of the only new units that we have not tried yet. I guess we can keep these guys as Bloodkin Thralls for now. Without spending more of the, uh, without spending more of the Valor. At least for a little bit. Alright, let's level them up, as in regular levels, and then let's strike. It's a ton of Skaven to be getting on with. And it should be a fun time. Uh, I guess we're going to want to move through the Wanderer's Path, Ordo Profundum, get that melee defense up and running. And yes, we do want Immortal Horror as well. And we will have to watch out for the enemy casting repeated uses of the, uh... Uh, of the whatchamacallit. Eh, we get our own warp lightning and uh, use it against them as well. Uh, the enemy casting repeated uses of Heroic Killing Blow, Deathly Vigor, probably Grave Ward for this, of Howling Warp Gale and stopping us in our tracks. We are not yet at rank 15, but we will... Huh? Wait. D is the Blood Frenzy for the army or is it only for you? I think it Kind of hard to say. Following units will receive bonuses from the skill. Blood Frenzy. Just, just out of curiosity. So this is all the Ordo Profundum units? They don't normally have Blood Frenzy. It's kind of vague, but I want to find out. Oh, no, they don't. It's only this guy that gets it. But that's not surprising. It's what we were expecting. Anyway, let's get you Slippery. Uh, Tidecall would probably be more useful against Skaven, and frankly, so would uh, Denizens of the Deep. Do we have any other spells that we would be using our... Well, we have Tidecall on you and Kraken's pull. That should really clear out blobs of enemy Skaven. I guess we're going to go into increased mobility, because, well... I mean, oh, right, it doesn't actually work here, does it? We have replenished troops... Okay, well then I should start putting points into replenished troops. Uh, well, you can have Todd call either way, because it'll be nice and spammable against those rattlings. Let's get your Scarred Vet and Taunt. The Scarred Vet will hopefully buff up your deep or dread to see Revenant form. Uh, we're going to declare war on you. Are you allied with anybody? You're allied with the Thousand Maws, and we don't have the Cult of Sotag discovered. Do we care about the Thousand Maws suddenly being at war with us? Not really. We don't really care about anybody suddenly being at war with us. Go. All right, well, it looks like they're good allies, as they did indeed join their ratty friends. Uh, we've got a little garrison, we've got the settlement garrison. And by the looks of it, this Oishal is not a tier 5. 
That doesn't look like a tier 5 garrison to me, so alas for Oishul, we may have to bring it down. Anyway, Pyrrhic victory sounds good. Now let's get to it. All righty, here we go, and the Skaven Sky once more working quite nicely for us as it uh, blends in with the Ordo Profundum stuff. Anyway, I think this is going to be a pretty fun battle, and you can't spell Profundum without fun. Uh, so we're going to, uh, well, enjoy ourselves as best we can. Our army is separated essentially into two blobs. The Bloodkin Thralls and Adept Knights are in the back line because they don't have the uh, Vanguard deployment provided by the Abyssal Revenant. And our uh, Ordo Profundum stuff all do. So they're going to charge directly at the enemy. And I'm excited to try out the uh, Depth Guard Promethean Reavers, a.k.a. Karabi Boys. Um, well, immediately. On top of that, we have to charge the enemy, as in we didn't have a real choice here. As the enemy has, what, three units of rattling guns, two units of warp fire throwers. I think there is a uh, warp lightning cannon back here as well. So we gotta make sure that we knock them out and get them engaged in combat before they do anything. The Abyssal Revenant heads directly for a Lord Skrolki over here, but Skrolk runs away, or at least doesn't want to engage in combat, but that's alright as we move towards engaging the rest of the range rats. I definitely don't want the enemy to leverage those weapons teams. And just like that battle against the Robo-Rats with Aberash, it's critical to make sure that they can get no mileage out of them. And that's what our Snakes will do. They're going to hand one each for each of those Rattling Guns. The Rattling Guns will book it on out of there, rather than firing due to their skirmish mode. And it looks like we're good. Only good against the first of the enemy armies. We've got the uh, garrison and stuff coming in, but we'll hopefully overwhelm and destroy this one and before the next force arrives. Alright, and the uh, empty dead together with the other Ordo Profundum units are just absolutely overrunning the enemy clan rats, but that's hardly surprising. Our adept thralls have finally moved in and are making sure that none of the enemy skirmishers or night runners or other range units can accomplish anything else either. Lord Skrulk is down to about 30% of his HP as well. And by the looks of it, surrounded by Ordo Profundum units in addition to the Abyssal Revenant, so he ain't gonna have a great time here. I uh, haven't gotten too much out of the Depth Guard Promethean Reavers right now, only about 30 kills, which is pretty low for Skaven, but they did keep the enemy artillery crews and such from firing, which was their job here. Besides, this first army being in march stance was not going to be uh, particularly threatening either, and we just sought to destroy it before the enemy reinforcements moved on field. Speaking of the enemy reinforcements, it looks like they have finally made it, and just in time, the enemy army is done for. We can run down Lord Skrulk, but frankly, it's going to be difficult to spot his uh, death animation underneath all that, so we'll leave these guys to it. Ooh, I do want to see the uh, rotting Prometheans give chase. To oh, can they even catch them? Let's see, 52 versus 46, maybe. Hard to say. Ah, ah, nearly there. Ah, there we go. Crabby Boy is going to pinch away at, uh, at at least a few of these uh, running storm vermin, though I imagine this unit is no more adept at chasing units down than regular rotting Prometheans are, so we should really leave this to the uh, Adept Knights while these guys are used as uh, defensive monsters, which they are very, very good at. Can't really expect them to do crazy amounts of damage like the rotting Promethean gunnery mobs because these are the uh, uh, not gunnery mob variety. Well, obviously they're also a completely different unit, but they're still based on the unit, so uh, we can expect them to perform at least somewhat similarly. Anyway, the second enemy army arrives and we're going to head directly for it. The Abyssal Revenant will try to touch down upon the Warlock Master. Man, it looks like he'll knock him flying, or at least send him away, while then being distracted and by some enemy units of storm vermin. Alas, the enemy, even at level 1, has access to that uh, Howling Warp Gale and the Abyssal Revenant. We'll get stuck, we'll keep, the other, uh, we'll keep the other snakes away so that we don't get them trapped by that Howling Warp Gale either. And 
and I think the Warp Gale is done. The snakes are still flying all over the battlefield, just looking for enemy range units while we surround and go for whatever else we can. We're going to send... well, this kind of isn't on purpose, but it's happening. Uh, this Blood can Thrall Warrior unit will be dueling, by the looks of it, a unit of enemy sensor bearers, which is kind of iffy. Uh, they got weapon... high weapon strength and armor piercing and... yeah. And these guys kind of ran into them, probably chasing the Night Runner units around, but, well, they'll turn and fight soon. On the bright side, the biggest blobs of enemies are going to be distracted by our snakes here, which have done a fantastic work through every battle that they've been in, and I am sure that that is going to be the same here. Our main line are non-Bloodkin Thralls that uh, were empty, dead, and uh, were uh, Ordo Profundum units are also starting to head up the hill. A little bit slower by the looks of it than the Bloodkin Thralls, but, well... And they're getting there. And either way, as soon as they hit an enemy line, since these are our elite forces, the enemy infantry, being rat infantry, will of course crumble. Ooh, that's a lot of enemy units sent flying by the Abyssal Revenant there. And the enemy should probably not have so many units around it. And, ooh, yeah, look at that. The Bloodkin Thrall Warriors are having a very bad day against the Plague Monk Sensor Bearers, having lost about half of their number, whereas the Plague Monks are only down by about 40% HP. Definitely have to watch out for these guys, and that contamination contact effect is probably quite effective as well, as we are undead, and thus the, uh, the lower our leadership, the faster we begin crumbling away. On the bright side, I believe that's the only unit that's having a really tough time of it. The enemy range units and by the looks of melee units as well are being struck let's say by our crabby boys and the enemy has no hope of de dealing really any damage to these guys with their 75 melee defense 110 armor and pretty huge hp pool as well with that it looks like the enemy's second or third i want to say second lord has dropped and another hero or another lord has dropped as well and with that the enemy army will shatter Lovely. I keep thinking it's raining because the uh, snakes are dripping all over everything. I said what I said. Anyway, uh, we're going to chase the enemy down as best we can. While Lord Skrulk's army doesn't need to be destroyed, the uh, garrison units certainly do. All right, well, that one worked reasonably well, or about as well as we can expect it to, but we do still have to be very, very careful with this army. As we saw, one unit, this particular unit of Bloodkin Thrall Warriors, and this was the unit with the massive bonus uh, from from the Banner of Lamia, uh, was in a one-on-one -on -one with the enemy unit of Plague Monk Sensor Bearers, and the Sensor Bearers were absolutely obliterating them. Uh, so yeah, well, at least with the Bloodkin Thralls, the non-Ordo Infantry, uh, they're still too fragile to face off against anything one-on-one, -on -one, with the exception of obviously the army that actually uh, super buffs them uh, with, uh, uh, with Albrecht Nictus there. And now, in addition to that, we still see the the same kind of problems the Depth Guard Promethean Reavers have as the regular Promethean, uh, rotting Prometheans from the Vampire Ret roster and yeah they seem to be getting into each other's way a lot and having a little bit of a difficult time actually dishing out the damage hence the relatively low uh, damage deltas gold value and kill numbers and all that sort of thing however we also can't consider this to be a, a sort of regular you know, offensive, uh, offensive cavalry unit. It's not really a cavalry unit, especially since it moves at roughly the same speed, only a tiny bit faster than our infantry. Sort of a big old monstrous infantry-ish unit that's more defensive-minded. So it has a very specific purpose. The snaky boys that we're going to get the ground on, the non-flying snaky boys that we're going to get in this army, are going to be uh, the cav for us. Abyssal. Not these guys. And it says Monstrous Beast. Well, uh, not Cavalry. Another student, though I'm not sure that we need them. And Oishal, you are... Oh, you are at rank 5. Well, why is your garrison so so bad? Oh, well, either way. Uh, great and worthy act for everybody. Abyssal, you're going to take Oishal. Going to take a little bit of damage here. 
But after we end the turn, we'll be able to hit the Trident of Mathlan with uh, uh, with our army at full HP. Uh, let us not raise it. Let's construct a Blood Keep. I'm gonna go with uh, Ordo Templarius here, I think, and we'll do... We'll do Ordo Draconis at Itza once, hopefully, Aberash comes here. We'll see. Construct Blood Keep. I want sort of one blood keep of each type in the uh, in the area. Plus, at tier four, this thing should be able to defend itself reasonably well, fairly quickly, especially once we get that uh, and we get that force gathering up and running. You, you're still not able to build that obsolete shipwreck. Okay, we'll we'll find out if it's tied to the Trident Math Lab. But in the meantime, we can build that nightly drill for the additional casualty or punishment rate and unit experience. And don't really care about the horde growth. Uh, you are at rank seven. We need you to be. Oh, we can upgrade you to an Elder Reaver immediately. Well, that's just swell. Lovely, our first Elder Reaver. And the more Elder Reavers we have, the less we'll have to rely on the Empty Dead uh, as a uh, as an infantry, a line infantry unit, and can A, transform them, and can B, upgrade them to the Fourth Sister. As I'm excited about how different the army will look once it has some of these uh, ships. Should be pretty neat. And also, how close are you? Well, you can up be upgraded immediately if we wanted you to. We want those Depth, well, we depth Guard Sea Serpent Reavers. I think we're going to go four... Sea Serpent Reavers and leave it to two Promethean Reavers, sort of to anchor the infantry line. As we'll need the faster moving uh, Sea Serpent Reavers instead to run things down in this army, as we will otherwise lack fast movers. And wait, how fast are you? Uh, the Revenant Hunters do move at 60, which is okay, but it's really not that much faster than the Krabby Boys. So yeah, we'll definitely need these guys to be uh, of the Snakey Boy variety. Anyway, assuming that you two or possibly four at least two become depth guard revenant haunters at least one of these guys still needs to upgrade into a th depth guard ravager i guess we could increase the capacity let me just see here we're at four right now so we have plenty of capacity for the uh, elder reavers at least yeah, let's do one more We'll get 4,000 shortly, anyway. And this will allow us to upgrade... Who has the least XP? Looks like it'll be you. I want to upgrade it right now before we end the turn so that uh, we don't lose movement rate because of it. Alright, there we go. Looking a lot better. And I guess we could upgrade these guys. We'll need four for Snaky Boys anyway. Okay, fine, fine, fine. I want to max this army out. Uh, let's go... Oh, 800. That's steep. As a real steep. Well, what can you do? They need to start racking up XP after all. Alright, find one and two. And do we even have enough left to uh, upgrade these guys? Find out. Uh, 400? Okay, yeah, we do have enough. We do have enough. Alright, one and two. And then we'll upgrade the others once these guys reach a snaky boy status so we don't have to waste the valor. Although we'll probably have to upgrade the vat or increase the um, capacity at some point anyways for mixed armies and other such things. Maximilian Jaeger, you are a gnome. Just want to double check that all of our uh, sort of raiding lords are not in danger where they currently are located. You two keep on raiding. We need that additional precious metal for various purposes. And I believe we're good to end the turn. Yes? Wait, who's Elka? Oh, right. You're, uh, yeah, keep going this way. Keep going this way. We need to keep an eye on where Astrogoth is. Hopefully he's coming to us. No guarantees, but, well, let's, uh, here's hoping. Uh, building upgrade on the sign skill points, Garrison Lords, wait. Building upgrade. Let's double check that none of our territories can become tier 4 yet. And by the looks of it, now. We'll still need to probably upgrade a few uh, troop reinforcement locations, but we'll save the metal for the more critical stuff and then uh, do that afterwards. Alrighty, we're bound to get attacked somewhere. I'm almost expecting Vlad to attack us here with uh, tons and tons of units, and in case he does, let's level up. Immortal Horror for you, get that battle healing cap for your own self, especially if you need to duel and Vlad, you're certainly gonna need it. Uh... You know, let's get Aura of Dark Majesty. When fighting the undead, at the very least, the leadership reduction should force them to start crumbling away sooner, which means it's a uh, fairly decent upgrade. Hard to hit for you, and we're good. And turn. Play don't forget anything. 
All right, let's see what Vlad does. Let's see what the spawn of witch hunters do as well. Hopefully they just besiege and now don't attack. Oh, <laughs> Vlad, you didn't want to attack Reinhardt, eh? Too bad he can't go into m ambush stance. Yeah. There's no way to actually ambush these guys, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, let's see. Supervisor, Rite of Awakening, Perform Talakwa, Itza, Clan, Moor, Settlement, Besiege, Nuln, and The Awakening, and Mount Gunbat. Okay, they're all besieged. Hopefully for more than one turn. Anarch, keep moving this way, sir. And we'll pop... I guess we'll pop one of these guys out. Who's lower level? Okay, you're higher level, so we'll pop you out of the... Oh, we can't do it this turn, eh? I screwed that up. Alright, we'll have to do it at the start of next turn and get Rabe in there. Alright, hopefully I didn't uh, screw that up in these guys' attack. Abyssal Revenant, you need to loop around. As this would otherwise be a problem, we do want more of those uh, empty dead. How's the garrison here, though? I mean, it's okay. As long as there isn't like a super stack of rats nearby. I suppose either way, we're going to want to fight for the Trident of Mathland right now, so let's level up and let's head to it. Uh, time for a quest fight. Uh, you are going to... I guess Wanderer's Path or to Profundum. Let's get that. Depth Guard Revenant Haunters. Revenant Haunters Summits. Oh, we can summon? Wait, who can summon these guys? I want to know. I wish to summon. Mm. Maybe, uh, maybe something else. Maybe something else allows us to summon them. We shall see. Maybe the Trident? Alrighty, let's level up and then let's go. Maybe it's time to go into Replenish Troops. So, you know, let's get Monkey Jacket, mostly because the ward save will help you not get targeted and obliterated by, well, many a thing. Uh, I guess since we're only using Replenish Troops, we may as well start leveling it. What about you? Do you have an item? Opal Amulet. Why do I have you have an Oh, I think we, we ran out of items that we needed to give to heroes. And have to save the rest for the Lord, so that makes sense. Alrighty, Blade Shield then. Try to get Hornswoggle ASAP to get that uh, debuff. And otherwise we're good to go. Alright, Trident of Mathlan. Let's give this a quick read. Uh, oh. I missed it. All right. Seeking to break free of the Silent Master's hold, the Abyssal Revenant searches for a power and belonging, belonging that to a god. It's belonging to a god. Whatever. As such a power would be instrumental in his efforts to break away or perhaps even dominate that which binds. And, huh. Ah, yes, the Trident of Mathland reward. I just am curious. Long thought lost to the ages, this relic was aided... This relic was said to be wielded by Manan himself. A relic of such power would surely grant its wielder supreme dominion over all they behold. Hm. Wait, trying to Manan. This is Manan. And this is Mathlan. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is obviously an error. So, Mathlan and Manan are different gods. Mathlan is the uh, elven god of the sea, and Manan is the is the uh, human uh, god of the sea. Uh, they are different. I suppose there are those who will say that they're probably the same. And frankly, neither Manan nor Mathlan is much worshipped by the uh, vampires, or the vampirates. They are, uh, they tend to worship Stromfels, the shark god of storms and such, who is much more of a jerk than Manan is, the, and that's compared to the uh, a relatively cruel sea god. But anyway, Stromfels is more fun. I'll try to Mathlan, slash Manan, go. All right, what do we have here? Ooh, skeletons. Ooh, oh, this is this looks fun. Uh, skeleton Croxagore, skeleton Saurus, and more of those dust grievers. We got plenty of dust grievers. Oh, damn, those rocket batteries there. Oh, we got to be real concerned here. This isn't Tabarash's army after all. This looks like this looks like a grand old time. Let's get to it. Darkness, my mind has languished 
seeking to claw back the memories of what once was. These shackles that bind me are not of my own making. Any attempt at subversion is met with pain. Reclamation of mine past. A fool's errand, perhaps. Even so, my mind shall not be dominated like some strong puppet for the amusement of the first. Power. I require power. Power that is adequate to outmatch the first and their inconceivable ways. The power of the sea. That of Mathlan. We must claim it from these servants of the first. Claim it so that we may be free. Abyssal might incarnate. Alrighty, here we go. Now we've got four of the Krabby Boys to uh, to make use of, and we're damn well going to put them to good use in this particular battle, especially since we've got more elite fare from the enemies to uh, contend with here, as uh, the Dusk Reavers obviously are going to be a lot more uh, a lot more difficult to bring down than the rats of the previous battle. But I guess generally speaking, it is an Abyssal Revenant kind of day since our two big battles will be focused around them. And now I do want to take a second here to check out the, well, I guess we've already seen the Dusk Reaver companies, but, uh, well, I guess it doesn't hurt to take a look at them again because they're pretty, uh, pretty nice, like those Hell Blasters and the... Oh, Dusk Reaver Mercenary Captain has a War Wagon with a Hell Reaver in it. That's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. Any more artillery sort of uh, uh, artillery sort of lords. There's the Dusk Reaver Raider Company with let's see, 47-41 melee attack and defense, and they've got Rowdy, so the perfect vigor as well. And we've certainly seen these guys give some of our units a fight for their money. So yeah, uh, the enemy Dusk Reaver Rocket Bat run for their money. Uh, that's the one. Uh, <laughs> The rocket batteries are definitely going to be our first target on the field. Ignoring everything else, we're going to head directly for them. And we'll check out how effective the enemy bony boys are. So, we got skeleton skin cohorts, and damn, they look awesome. If anything, the uh, skeleton skin cohorts look, uh, uh, look better than... Do they have ghost tongues? Hmm. I like that. Slottish likes that. Everybody liked that. Uh, anyway, uh, the... <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the Skeleton Skin Cohort look pretty great. I love it. I love everything about it. Then we've got Skeleton Croxagores as well. Croxagores are always great, and what makes everything greater when you make it into a, a skeleton form is my undead bias showing. Uh, then I do believe we had Temple Guard here as well. No, not the Dusk Reaver Pike Company, but the Pike Company does look fantastic as well. I think everybody loves the, uh, Everybody loves a good long pike. A good long poke with a good long pike, so I giggle. And let's see, we got some zombie pirates. Where are the temple guard? They were here. Uh, oh, there are... Ah, nah, nah, there we go. We got source warriors, and maybe they're coming in as uh, reinforcements. And ooh, source warriors. They're looking pretty great as well. Yeah, gotta love the skeleton units. And yes, I'm taking all the time to take a look at all these units, because, well, I mean, just look at them. And we'll see how effective they are now. 48-44, their stats are about on par with the Dusk Reavers, in fact, and on top of that, they hit harder than they do. Interesting. And we'll see how they fare against our piles of Krabby Boys. Alright, looks like the Skeleton Skin Cohort and everybody is moving down to essentially react to the formation of our main army, but that works for us as we're sending the Two Snakes and the Abyssal Revenant to go immediately after those Dusk Reaver rocket batteries. And ooh, look at all those bones in the background. They look like Dread Saurians, except, you know, like a thousand times the size. Try to raise those things. 
Who needs bone giants when you have, I don't know, bone titans or something? Uh, let's see. All right, the Abyssal Revenant has stopped the enemy in its tracks. The Dusk Reaver battery, the first one, is uh, just about destroyed, and the other snakes, and Dag, and Ithaca, and I forgot the uh, the other one. Uh, not a regular, well, just a regular run. Vermont Bachman. Vermont Bachman, whatever. Our other Ordo champion is what I'm getting at. And the, these guys really should have protected their artillery pieces. Oh, it looks like they are a little bit. They're going to take some kits and lose 10% of the HP to the Dusk Reaver captured War Wagon Company. We got a few nice shots off from those as well as the Rifle Company and the Necrofex. Colossus, ooh, those are rifles are looking pretty good as well. Are those Imperial Rifles? Just out of curiosity. Uh, yeah, I do see Imperial symbols on them, so yes, indeed they are. All right, and with the Dusk Reaver's artillery destroyed, we are no longer threatened by him. We're going to have uh, Dag and Ithaca probably duel the Necrofex Colossus. Somebody else go after the uh, uh, the War Wagons, and then, of course, our Abyssal Revenant to go after the enemy lord. In the meantime, it's time for the Krabby Boys to lead the charge. And it's Skeleton Saurus and Skeleton Everything uh, versus our Krabbies. And there's those Croxagors as well, but with these guys leading, we've got a lot of HP and defensive stats to rely upon, slash fall back upon, so we're not too worried. In addition to that, the enemy range units are quite hard hitting, especially as we've seen before as we've faced off against the uh, Dusk Reavers many a time, but if they're wasting shots on the uh, rotting Prometheans, that works for us. Or Promethean Guard, whatever we're calling What are these guys called? Promethean Reavers. All right. Well, the enemy is engaged. Once again, I like seeing the crabs face up against the uh, skelly croxies. I see one fall in there. No, they leave. Uh... Let me just see here. Crumbling away. All right, all right. I just had to double check. All right, and by the looks of it, the enemy main line is being overwhelmed, and as soon as their skeletons are uh, done for, the pikes move on, and so the uh, and Dusk Reaver sent the chaff against us first, which is appropriate. Uh, the two pike companies, I believe, the Vampire Fleet Admiral is in here as well, though the Abyssal Revenant is trying to go after him, and, but by the looks of it, uh, we're, uh, our main lines are surrounding and destroying the enemy fairly effectively. There we go, and looks like we are getting some splash damage out of those rotting Prometheans as well. Not too much to say tactically about this aspect of the battle, as it is just main line connecting with main line, but it's some fantastic looking units on both sides, and well, a little more could you want. Over in the background, it looks like the, uh, the enemy... Necrofex Colossus is just about done for in critical binding at the very least, having a bad day against those snakes despite the support of the other Dusk Reavers nearby, like that green uh, snake breath that we've got as well. And soon the Colossus will go down. We are also able to distract slash destroy the enemy war wagons with uh, the Abyssal Revenant slash the other snakes, and it looks like the first of the enemy armies is uh, done for. And I do mean first as enemy reinforcements are moving on to the field as well, so we'll have to try to obliterate what remains here and then uh, regroup, reposition, reform our army to uh, deal with the rest. Ah, once again, love those pikes. Jealous of the enemy pike units, if nothing else. But alas for the enemy, not too, not enough pikes to contend with what we've got, and these guys will melt away. Now let's see what we've got in terms of reinforcements. Ooh, we got another big boy, a Dusk Reaver command, Commandant, rather. And it's another Dread Saurian with... Yeah, this one also has that solar engine how to thing. This thing can hit pretty darn hard as we saw the last time we fought against it. But we have our undead coatl or fathom terror something uh, to uh, face off against it, which is once again a contest of some pretty awesome looking units. Uh, the enemy also has a Source Scar Veteran White, which appears to be riding a semi-ghostly, semi-skeleton uh, Carnosaur here. I don't see the white here as well. Oh, and the uh, the Bone Throne that these guys have is looking pretty good, and huh, 
I like the changes to the uh, usually sort of jade green rocks that these guys have and on their shields and their maces. Oh, they're pretty great. I actually like that color scheme quite a lot. No, yeah, anyway. Uh, anyway, what else do we have here? More Sora Skeleton Warriors, Skeleton Horned One Riders as well. Let's see how these guys look. Yeah, these guys have more of the uh, uh, the Jade stuff, but I think the uh, the two types work together. Ooh, and the enemy will advance under covering fire from that solar engine. We gotta book it towards the enemy, but if the enemy is only taking shots at our Krabby Boys, and then that'll work in our favor. Though it does look like that one did connect with some Promethean Reavers. Ah, I guess it was all Skeleton Source Warriors. I, I swear I saw Temple Guard, but I could have been wrong. Ooh, and it looks like once again the enemy will send the chaff first, but that will most likely allow the Dusk Reaver Marines to fire upon us. We gotta be careful with that, as they can do massive amounts of damage if we let them. There we go, firing away, just like uh, in Blunderbuss variety. Of a weapon, and we're going to loop our Bloodkin Thrall at up knights around and the snakes over the main portion of the battle to get at those Marines. All right, once again, the Krabby Boys lead the charge, and hopefully the Carnosaur and enemy, uh, uh, enemy source Scar Veteran White will waste their high damage on the Rotting Prometheans and thus not be able to knock out models of our Ordo Profundum infantry. Over in the background, the Abyssal Revenant is fighting and has the enemy lured down to about half HP. I feel like the Abyssal Revenant's stats are deceptive. They don't look nearly as strong as, for example, Aberrashes or anything like that, but he's been doing a great job at, uh, for 69, 69, nice amount of HP, but uh, uh, he's been doing a great job in not taking really any damage and dishing out damage to the enemy lords. Granted, he's nearly twice the ever level of this, lo of this lord, but, uh, well... Uh, these are special lords, and their level doesn't seem to matter nearly as much. Looks like we get a uh, uh, we get a wraith storm down upon this dusk reaver marine company, a second dusk reaver marine company, and it looks like that did decent damage before the snake moved in. Another couple of hits, and the enemy dusk reaver commandant will crumble away together with that big old dread saurian mount. And down goes the big boy, alas, no skeletons to crush and beneath it's a bulk. Speaking of crushing skeletons, we're just about done here. As with the Commandant's fall, his uh, chaff infantry are done for as well. And the magics binding those skeletonsaurus are gone. Oh, lovely. With that, the battle is pretty much ours, though the enemy looked like it did keep three units on the field as well up here. These guys were actually positioned to, by the looks of it, protect the uh, Dusk Reaver artillery, and this would have been a really good position for them to fire down upon us from if the enemy hadn't lost those Dusk Reaver artillery. If we didn't have too much in the way of flyers, it would have been a lot tougher to uh, go up here and deal with them, and we could have been dealing with uh, artillery fire for the entire entire battle which could have been uh, well which could have been quite bad for us anyway we're gonna send uh, these snakes up here well, I like uh, I like when all three of them fly together and we're going to follow them up uh, with the uh, ascended form of the transformed form I guess of the uh, uh, of the empty dead, what are they called again? The pervaded void, which look pretty darn neat as well. Basically, the uh, uh, basically their ground versions, the empty dead, grow wings, and then they can head into combat. I guess uh, you need. I think these were on cooldown for 120 seconds before we could use them, so it would be uh, 120 seconds, two minutes in melee before they can transform, which is quite a bit. But they can have a little fun here in their other form. And it's not like they can't fight in melee in that form either, but I do imagine that their hitboxes are bigger, which would mean they're a little bit more vulnerable. Anyway, we've seen the snakes do their thing. Now we can watch the uh, flyers crest the, uh, crest the plateau or the cliffside and then come down upon the enemy. Alright, and there we go. Those Dusk Reaver Marines are going to have a pretty bad day and by the looks of it. And those are some big old mauls for these guys to rip them apart. But flying monster. Quite a lot of them, though. 
Man, these guys are really neat, and... Uh, man, now I don't want to transform all of them into uh, the fourth sister. Man, hopefully we can get the Abyssal Revenant to uh, kill off a few more of the... Uh, uh, of these armies so that he can get a few more of these guys. At the very least, two fourth sisters, and then once again, two of these uh, pervaded void slash empty dead units. And that would be ideal. And by the looks of it, they're doing fairly well, though the Dusk Reaver Marines look pretty darn awesome, and they are not uh, strong enough to contend with this special unit, especially buffed up as it is. And, of course, with our snakes all around. Anyway, with that, the battle ends, and the trident is ours. Uh, let's see what we get from it. All right, very nice fight seeing all those undead lizards really made me want a an undead lizard faction and to take Lustria over with and well other places as well uh, would certainly be a uh, would be a fun time. Uh, in terms of the biggest enemy threats, it was definitely those Dusk Reaver Marines, but uh, fortunately for us, we were able to essentially keep most of the enemy range units from accomplishing anything, uh, which worked out well. And more importantly, perhaps, is that was a really good showcase of what the Depth Guard Promethean Reavers are for and what they can do. By leading the charge, none of our uh, uh, melee infantry blob really got that damage, and these guys were able to essentially absorb all uh, the hits from all the enemy range and melee units allowing us to do damage with our melee infantry and keeping them from uh, leveraging uh, their strength. Very nice. Very nice indeed. This army is finally starting to truly come together. Uh, let's also... I guess it's pointless to enthrall all captives. I guess we'll dual captives for the XP. Not like we really need to heal. Yeah, all right, dual captives it is, and we get, like, no money for it. All right, free money, free martial valor. Well, not free, but you know. And casualty replenishment is nice. We also got our trident. And what do we have here? Let's see. Replaces the Abyssal Revenant with his ascended form. The Revenant's unique building chain stays locked. Continues the current Abyssal Revenant permanently. Unlocks the Revenant's unique... Oh, that's why it was... Well, okay, good. This episode answered the question that was at the start of the episode. Uh... Ascended form, eh? Let's, let's see what this says. With the trident in hand, the Revenant feels a strange sensation. A calling without words. A yearning to be. He has felt it ever since his latest return. But not like this. Gripping the weapon firmly, he slowly begins to... This is the most slaneshi thing I've ever read. Gripping the weapon firmly, he slowly begins to allow his mind to ponder as he studies the trident. And then, as of his own thought and yet not, he realizes he has a decision to make. Ascended form it is. I mean, we gotta see it. We've seen the regular form, we gotta see the, uh, uh, the ascended form now. Heed the call of the depths. Accepting his new destiny, the Revenant silently embraces the sensation and becomes engulfed in an eldritch, unholy glow, intensifying to an impossible luminescence until in a final crescendo, the light flashes blindingly. All right. A uh, great and worthy act for Fremont. We can still equip the trident of... Manan, he said Mathlan in the uh, in the quest battle. Uh, what does this give us? A wind ability, okay, so probably similar to that of uh, Alberic's trident. Yes, all tridents are well similar to each other. Ooh, bombardment ability causes magical damage, small strike area, spell resistance plus one hundred percent, and missile resistance plus thirty percent. Charge reduction, speed cannot move. Eh? Huh. And affects allies. Thunder call. So this is a power up, but also does damage. Interesting. Weak for a single combat. Well, well, we'll try it out and see exactly how this works. I am mighty. As the light clears, there is no longer is even the shallow mockery of a man, but some eldritch creature, a massive towering beast of depths and dark power. The Abyssal Revenant has ascended, claiming the wayward power that the Trident has offered. Some experience, some experience, has been transferred to the Ascended Abyssal Oh, wow, he lost half his levels. Well, that was to be expected. Uh, so he still has the Grandmaster of the Ordo Profundum, and otherwise his these things. It didn't change. Terrible Blows passive. 
I'm just wondering if anything here has changed. I think he had all of these. Mm, invocation Eternal Wanderer, Kiss of the Deep, Warp Lightning, Tide Call, Denizens of the Deep. The rest of this looks the same. What about this? Ooh, looking pretty good. I remember seeing a picture of this guy when uh, and downloading the wad, and now at least we know uh, who, what, etc. He is. We also now have the campaign movement range after winning a battle and a faction wide magic item drop chance buff, which is nice. This guy looks pretty awesome, though. And he will fit nicely in with the ascended form of the empty dead. We just gotta get more empty dead. All right, let's give him some levels. World of Blades, Blood Frenzy, and Slippery and Unnatural Force, and I, mean, I guess we go all the way to Terrible Blows, or at least we will once we're level 20. Uh, we want to get Honor or Death ASAP as well. Still has Kraken's Pull, which we now won't have, but only for a little bit. Get you the Restless Dead. Max out Tide Call, and I mean... I feel like using Denizens of the Deep will more likely than not just get in our way. I mean, there will certainly be useful for it. Let's get Warp Lightning for now, but I'll think about it. And I still want Kraken's well, at least one point in it, because it's quite useful in the way that it, uh, well, sucks you in. It's been a very slanashy kind of day. Uh, let's get your hero Killing Blow, and we'll get Grave Ward, Monkey Jacket, and back into the Wanderer's Path. Ordo Profundum as soon as we can. Alrighty. Excited to try out his Abyssal, or Abyssal Ascended form. Next. Now, this also means that alas, as I under- Oh. Wait, what? His horde went back to zero? Oh, you got to be kidding me. We built the Ordo Profundum headquarters. No. <laughs> Game, why? Why you do this? It unbuilt everything. We spent 15 metal on this. Unbelievable. All right, well, you know what? I think this time we're going to build the War Armory for the Horde growth and then buff it up because it's otherwise going to take way too long to get his Horde growing back to where it needs to be. It's going to take ages. Might not even complete it again by the end of the campaign. I did not know that it would destroy his Horde. Or at least I didn't, uh, didn't consider the possibility. Uh, it's going to go around this way. I'd really like to go here. Hmm... I'm just wondering what would be fast. We'd still... And the issue is we'd still have to cross Ashelotl. Whereas here we could at least land. I feel like these guys will attack long before we get there, unfortunately. You know, we're gonna march stance. We will... We could just bypass the marks of the old ones. Or we could sack it on the way for the XP. Yeah, we'll do that. March stance and then sack it on the way. Army's looking a lot better now, and hopefully Oishul doesn't get attacked. We would also probably benefit from summoning a lord here. Eternal Discipline. Do we have a Depth Guard Lord with a good virtue? Stoic Violence. No, I don't like any of these. I mean, I guess if I don't like any of these, we'll get the Depth Guard Lord in here. And just in case we get attacked while uh, and this guy's gone, let's just immediately buff you up as well. With the important stuff. Deathly Va- oh. Don't need Deathly Vigor, because you can get it in by other means. Uh, get you a hard ticket. Because you'll be fighting by yourself and you don't have an army. Let's also get you a Mortal Horror. So, Wander, Warriors of the Wandering Path for Honor and Glory into Mortal Horror. Definitely Kiss of the Deep, Honor, or Death, and Tide Call, World of Blades, all the buffs, and you get Kraken's Pull as well. Uh, eh, might as well move into Taunt, so let's get you Scarred Vet and Taunt. Probably could have gone for Swashbuck there, but it, it, it honestly doesn't matter that much. Alrighty, you defend Oishul, and we'll see if uh, it gets hit by a full stack soon. I'm sad about the Horde. It took so long to get there. Oh well. Oh well, let's see what else we've got though. Ooh, we are very rapidly running out of time. You are headed to Lamia, my friend. So that Abrash doesn't have to worry about going there himself. Have Traverse Abyssal Riptide. The last of the libraries. We only have the one missing. Alright, good. And Zacharias. I guess we're still going to Quinell and then here and then back to Castle Kirkuson. We're going to have to essentially stick around here for quite a while. As it's going to take a while for it to grow and thus to be able to uh, defend itself. At least at level 2 we'll build up the Force Gathering. This might allow you to sort of range out a little bit more. And ooh... I see the Skaven are fighting the, uh, uh, they are fighting the Wood Elves out there. Raise the place. And you didn't move too far. Beautiful. Pop you into Channeling Stance, I guess, for you to heal up and then start moving to Massive 4 Hopefully we can get back here. 
All right, Aberash. Well, he probably won't have to... What are you doing? Okay, well, you're kind of a waste of time, so we're just going to quickly auto-resolve you. You were aware that we were at war with you, right? The weird little faction? <laughs> okay. And... Raise the place. Alright. I guess, wait. A Vampiric Bloodkeep library is nearby. But it isn't a library, it's just a blood keep. So, unlike the other ones, unlike the library ones, we won't have the uh, Blood Knight raid thing nearby, will we? Meaning that they can resettle everything around these ones, but that's okay. And these guys can at least uh, fight. Oh, this also wasted Aberash's movement range. Bit of a shame, but it's not like he's threatened by anything here, so we'll keep marching up this way. And I do see Astrogoth has moved closer to us, so hopefully he stays right there. Alright. Everybody keep an eye out on things. You guys will join Aberash's army as soon as he's ready for you, but alas. Until we can transfer some of these guys, it's not now. I suppose we could just delete two and rebuild them. Hmm. There's any potential for it. Uh, Heinrich, you are going to be our new lord, or one of the new lords. Unless I'm mistaken, let's just double check who got what. Hey, I've got the Vanguard deployment for Thrall Knights, which is what I wanted, and I assume you do not have the same thing. You have buffs for Blood Dragon Neophytes, which is great. But that's not what we need here. Uh, you two, stick around. Why don't you? And they can wait until Aberash comes back and until we can get Rabe in here. Also keep our rating for that precious metal. All right, Edmund, you are well on the way to Null. Hopefully you can reach it. Hopefully he doesn't immediately attack us next turn, but we'll see. Go, go, go. All right, let's see. You are still stuck where you are. I really wish we could hide Reinhardt, but alas, we cannot. So there isn't much that we can do here. We could try to attack all of these guys. But if we do, I think we'd have to save it for next episode. That'll be a pretty epic battle with, like, five stacks. Especially against Bloodkin Thralls, which would be vulnerable to the uh, enemy heroes in particular. And to Vlad himself. I'm, I've kind of convinced myself. Alright, we'll save that one for next time, then. Uh, Rudolf? Yeah, you guys are sticking around the Awakening. We'll see if those guys attack and attack. They probably will. This is good. Abyssal Revenant is good. Rabe, you are supposed to join Anarch. Anarch? You are stuck. So this will happen. To, this will have to happen next turn. Alrighty, and I believe that's all we can do, or at least is pretty much all we can do. So I think with that, I'm going to call the episode here. We will save the big old fight with Reinhardt versus all this for next time, and then end the turn, and then proceed to let's see. We'll probably do the hidden threat toward the Jade. Now we'll probably start with the Jade Path, and next time to get the Jade Daimyo on the field. And start generating another army around Nong Chang to try out those uh, other units. Alright, just gotta collect them all and we're so, so close as in two turns we'll arrive at Lamia and get the last of the libraries. Though it'll be a while before we build up the uh, Carcass Sun one. Uh, this will actually probably end up being the last one since Lamia is closer. Anyway, more Blood Dragons to come, so stay tuned. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially the threshold for the hour-long episode. If you're into that, all glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.